Hi. And what we've got to do then is we've got that y equals root 3 cos x plus sine x and we've got to express y in the form r sine x plus alpha where r is greater than 0 and alpha is an angle in radians between naught and pi upon 2. So how are we going to do this? Well this is quite a common type of question that you're likely to find and you can do it the slow way if you like and I'll do it the slow way first of all just to show you how you can do it but uh, if I was given the freedom I certainly wouldn't want to do it the way I'm going to first of all show you. I'll show you the quick way at the end but if we're going to do the slow way let's just show you if we take r sine x plus alpha just put it down here sine x plus alpha what we need to do is expand this by using the sine of a plus b formula and you should be familiar with that we'll just keep the r out here and put a square bracket like this when you expand the sine of a plus b you get sine a cos b plus sine b cos a so in other words you get for this sine x cos alpha plus sine alpha cos x alright now what I'm going to do is expand this and what we get is r and I'm going to put the cos alpha first okay r cos alpha sine x and then we have r times sine alpha cos x that's going to give me plus r sine alpha cos x now what I'm going to do is look, looking at what I've got up here you'll notice that the first term is cos x and the second term is a sine x term so what I'm going to do is swap these two terms around and so this becomes r sine alpha cos x plus r cos alpha sine x and you can see that I've got two terms and this is identical to what we've got for y r um, we've got root 3 I should say cos x plus and then sine x so we can compare what we have here with what we have here you should be able to see that in the coefficient of cos x that's this bit here r sine alpha corresponds to the root 3 and for this term sine x term you can see that the coefficient of sine x is r cos alpha and that co corresponds to the coefficient of sine x here which is in fact a 1, 1 sine x so if we compare them we can see that we therefore have that r sine alpha is basically the root 3 and the r cos alpha is essentially the 1 that's if we compare the coefficients and we can number these equations 1 and 2 and we can solve them for r and alpha and the standard way of solving for r is to square both of the equations 1 and 2 to do 1 squared plus 2 squared because if we do that we end up with r squared sine squared alpha plus r squared cos squared alpha is equal to root 3 squared which is just going to be 3 plus 1 squared which is 1 and if we factorize this we can pull out r squared as a common factor and we get sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha and this will equal 3 and 1 which is 4 now sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is always 1 it's a well known identity you should know that so we get r squared times 1 which is just r squared so you have r squared equals 4 and so therefore we would square root this and end up with r equals 2 technically if you square root 4 it's plus or minus 2 but r is a number greater than 0 so therefore r is 2 and now that we've got r is 2 
we can also find out alpha and the standard way of doing this is to do equation 1 divided by equation 2. So if we were to do that, let's just put it up here, equation 1 divided by equation 2, you should know that sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha and the R's would cancel. So what we end up with is tan alpha equals root 3 over 1. Root 3 over 1. And to get alpha it would be the inverse tan of root 3. This is a well-known answer. The inverse tan of root 3 is in degrees 60 degrees but we've got to work in radians so that is the equivalent to pi upon 3. Or you could make sure your calculator is in radians mode and just inverse tan root 3 and you should find that your calculator gives you pi over 3 radians. All right? Okay so at the end of the day what we've got by this method is that y equals r sine x plus alpha. r is 2 and then we've got the sine of x plus alpha alpha is pi over 3. And there you have it. But this is quite a lot of work, okay, just for four marks. So what I would suggest to you is that you learn the quicker way, really, okay. And if you go on my website, you'll find that there's identities for things like this. And those identities are basically a sine x plus b cos x where a and b are constants is identical to r sine of x plus alpha. And how do we work out what r is? r always turns out to be, let's just write it in for you, the square root of a squared plus b squared. And alpha is always the inverse tan of the B number over the A number. So when it comes to doing something like this, if I was given this, I would see that to get this in this particular format, I've got to have the sine term first of all. So we'll just do this in blue and we'll squeeze it in this space here so you can compare the two methods. So if I had y, okay, as I see it here, I would change this round. I would rewrite this as sine x plus root 3 cos x. And I can see now that by comparing it to this, the a value is 1 and the b value is root 3. So I'd immediately know that r, okay, was equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So the a, as I say, is 1, so that's 1 squared plus the b squared. b is the root 3, and so we've got root 3 all squared. And that's exactly what I did somewhere over here. Where was it? It was down over here, basically. Okay? And 1 squared is 1, root 3 squared is 3, so I've got the square root of 4. So that's going to be the root of 4, which we know is 2. And when it comes to getting alpha, alpha is the inverse tan of the b number over the a number. b was root 3 and a was 1, so it's the inverse tan of root 3 over 1. And we've seen that that up here was pi upon 3. So, much shorter if you can remember this particular formula. And, as I say, you can find these on my website under Trig Identities. Okay, so just go to the index and look under Trig Identities and you should be able to see a revision guide on this. And that's how I would have done the question. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this part and so I hope you've been able to follow what I've been saying.